The following video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. Visit yellowjacket.com to find out why Yellow Jacket is the industry standard in refrigerant hoses, tools, manifolds, and vacuum pumps, and many other tools. All right, guys, a little quick video here on how I learned how to check superheat. Now, I think that every new technician should learn to do it this way before owning a pair of digital gauges. That's just my opinion. So basically what we have, okay, and the reason is I left my S-Mans at home. I took them out the truck because the batteries were dead and I had posted that a while back. I changed it out. The, I changed out the batteries, and I like to clean them. You know, I clean the screen and everything. I left them in the house. Forgot to put them back in the truck. All right. So I just set this new unit here. That's one we set a couple years ago. And we have our fill piece meter with the thermal with the K-type temperature that came with it. Not even a pipe clamp. And I have it electrical taped. To the suction line. So I'm going from the 410A saturation to the line temperature to get my superheat. This is how I think every upcoming technician should learn how to read superheat and subcooling before advancing to digital gauges, just so you understand what's going on. This is how I was taught. And there are a lot of technicians that still prefer to do it this way. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, my father has a pair of S-Mans, but he still per sometimes prefers to do it this way. So doing it this way does not make you a bad technician, does it make you a hack? Alrighty, so we've got about 46 degrees saturation versus 69 on our suction line. That's about 22 degrees of superheat. Now, if you don't want to do simple math in your head like that, there's another way. There's an app right here. This is what it looks like. It's called PT Calc. So you click it. There's a bunch of different things down here. Temperature, pressure, pressure, temperature, subcooling, superheat. Well, I'm on superheat, and I have 410A as my refrigerant. Pressure at service valve on suction line is 135. Suction line temperature is 69. So that gives you 22 degrees of superheat. So you can see right there, we're running 135 on suction. So we input that. We're running 69 degrees on the suction line. We input that, and it gives us a superheat of 22. Again, there's the app if you're interested, right here. Or you can just do, you know, the math in your head. I'll be honest, math has never been my friend. I'm, I'm decent at it, but sometimes I still use that app if I'm doing it this way. But, you know, back in the day, they didn't, they didn't have all that. But at 22 degrees of superheat, I'm happy with this system, with the charge. Uh, we did not change the indoor equipment. The indoor equipment was newer than the outdoor. It was, it's a train gas furnace with a train evaporator. It's a piston driven evaporator, believe it or not, from train. But it, it, on the tag, it says R22 slash R410A. So we put a piston in, to, uh, a smaller piston to match for 410A. And the system's cooling very well. All right, guys, that's just a quick video on how I learned how to do superheat. Nothing special. I just thought that I would uh, share that. And I will be insulating my suction line. That's the last thing that I do because I get comments all the time that say this guy doesn't even insulate his suction line. So anyway, all right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all on the next one.